Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Well, it's noon, so I'm not quite sure what you say. Hello. Buongiorno a tutti. I'm Carol Vale. I'm the director of the Peggy Guggenheim Collection, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you today at the Giardini. As you already know, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston was elected as the commissioner of the 59th International Art Exhibition at La Biennale di Venezia in 2022, this year, presenting the work of Simon Lee in cooperation with the US Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation has a very strong link with the Venice Biennale. In 1986, the foundation actually purchased the US pavilion from the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, with funds which were provided by the Peggy Guggenheim Collection Advisory Board. And since 1986, the Peggy Guggenheim Collection has collaborated very closely with the United States Information Agency, the Fund for Artists at International Festivals and Exhibitions, and then the Bureau for Education and Cultural Affairs of the US Department of State in the organization of exhibitions of the visual arts and architecture here at the US Pavilion. Today it's a real honor and I must say a great, great pleasure to greet and welcome the artist Simon Lee, whose unique works explore and center ideas about history, race, gender, labor, monuments, and more, I'm sure, creating and reclaiming powerful narratives of black women. Furthermore, in 2018, Simon Lee was a recipient of a Hugo Boss Prize, a biennial award administered by the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum that honors significant achievement in contemporary art. And in 2019, I remember well, a solo exhibition of her work was presented at the Guggenheim in New York. Thank you, Simon. That was a great moment. Now I'm delighted to introduce Thomas Smitham, the Chargé d'Affaires, from the US Embass Embassy in Rome, who will just say a few words. And then Jill Med Medvedov, director of the ICA and commissioner of the US Pavilion will follow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, benvenuti a tutti, un gran piacere essere qui con tutti voi in questo, uh, questa occasione molto importante. Uh, thank you very much for all of you for being here. It's a great pleasure to see everybody in person after so many uh, months of, of lockdown and not being able to get together. I was here last year at the Architecture Biennale and you, none of you were here. It was very small and it was a, a small exhibit. Um, I want to thank, um, first of all, Carol Vale uh, for uh, her work with the Peggy Guggenheim Collection. As you know, or as you might know, uh, the State Department has worked with the Peggy Guggenheim Foundation over the past 30 years to run and maintain this pavilion that provides such a great venue uh, for artists and for all of you to convene in. In my business, we talk a lot about the art of diplomacy, but I'd like to focus today a little bit on the diplomacy of, of art. There are ways that art helps us understand things that memos and essays can't uh, help us understand. And I think as you see the work of Simone Lee, you will understand how her work brings out some of the things that we just can't grasp from reading essays or from uh, reading memos that we write in the embassy. So I want to thank you, Simone, for such a great and beautiful exhibit here. I have a couple other thanks to make. Um, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston uh, organizes this and curates this exhibit, and Jill Medvedow and Ava Raspini have been such a great uh, co-curators and co-commissioners of this event. Uh, it couldn't happen without their participation, and I think you've done a great job in, in bringing this about. I also wanted to acknowledge uh, the students of Spelman College. This is an art exhibit, but it's also part of a broader engagement, and you'll hear something about uh, the October meeting that, that you're planning to convene. And the students of Spelman College have been able to work with Simone Lee, understand your work, and understand a little bit more about curating. And there will be an opportunity to work with some Italian students uh, throughout, throughout the year and ex share uh, experiences. But first, but, but mostly, I want to thank and congratulate uh, Simone Lee for her exhibit here, uh, Sovereignty. Uh, each, each year, the Department of State works with a panel of experts to choose a representative of the US to, to feature at the pavilion. And 
I don't think we could have done a better job this year than selecting Simone Lee uh, for, for her work and how she represents a lot of interesting ideas that, again, we, uh, we need to explore and things about identity and gender and shared experiences and histories um, that, um, as you see in the transformation of this kind of Jeffersonian building, also brings out all kinds of interesting uh, reviews and uh, revi potentially revisions of, of US history. So all that, all that work um, has been super impressive. Again, the diplomacy of art, the, the way that art helps us understand and, and expresses things that we can't otherwise do. I'm going to leave the work of Simone Lee to the experts um, because uh, I've just had a, a tour of the exhibit and I understand that I'm only grasping part of, of your deep expressions here. So I'm going to leave that part to others. But before closing, I want to do one thing. And that is, um, this is a, a letter en route to you um, from the President of the United States. Um, it's, uh, the hard copy is in the mail, but I have a copy and I'd like to read it if you permit me. And it says, Dear Simone, congratulations on your historic showcase at the United States Pavilion at the Venice Biennale. You have so much to be proud of and the First Lady and I are honored to have you represent our nation on the global stage at such an important exhibition. Your trailblazing representation and creative expression will educate and inspire people around the world. An artist's gift is to imagine something no one else can, to carve, to paint, to sculpt, to dream until you set that vision free. Thank you for sharing your vision with the international community on behalf of our great nation. Sincerely, Joe Biden. Thank you very much. And let me, let me invite uh, Jill uh, to, the, to the podium. Wow. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Thomas. Wow, Simone, that was amazing to hear. Um, the opening of this exhibition at the U.S. Pavilion is a historic moment for La Biennale, the United States, our global community. And I am so moved. I'm quite moved and to hear this recognition from the White House. That's a first. Um, your exhibition, from the transformed facade that you all see in front of you uh, to the works in bronze and ceramic and film within cross geography, time, materials, and cultures, I think it is profound, it's beautiful, and it will have a lasting impact on future generations of artists and scholars and on all our visitors, of which we had over 5,000 yesterday alone. For La Biennale, uh, Simone created an all new series of works that address absences in the historical archive with knowledge long held and too long unseen. In the work you see before you, which is titled Facade, the artist confronts the history of the U.S. pavilion itself, uh, this Jeffersonian Monticello-like building uh, with its ideas of democracy and liberty for some. Considering the building as a sculpture, Simone Lee transforms the architecture with this installation of columns and thatch roofing, evoking a 1930s West African palace and referring to a landmark 1931 Paris Colonial Exhibition, which was a massive display of the cultures and peoples of lands then under French colonial control. This exterior intervention in introduces these contrasting forms and materials that juxtapose this history with that of the U.S. Pavilion and in the space between these two facades, creating new meaning and new possibilities. And standing before this astonishing intervention is the monumental 24-foot-high sculpture titled Satellite. It took the combined efforts of everyone uh, to get this, to ensure that this work would be here at the opening. Um, and I am just deeply grateful to everyone who helped organize this exhibition, to the brilliant, uh, brilliant teams of the artists, um, 
in Brooklyn and Philadelphia, here in Italy, and to everyone who ensured that uh, in the midst of a shipping crisis in the world that this piece could arrive here and greet, uh, greet all, of, all of us. Satellite recalls a traditional dimba, a headdress shaped like a female bust created by the Baga peoples of the Guinea coast that's used during ritual performances, life cycle events, to communicate often with ancestors, to acknowledge those who have come before. In the place of the head typically found on a traditional dimba headdress, Simone Lee has topped her sculpture with a cast satellite dish, again crossing technologies and times, uh, and with its capacity for transmitting and receiving, uh, echoing the dimba's function as a conduit for communication. These and all the works in Simone Lee's sovereignty with their references to anti-colonialist movements around the world speak to ideas of self-determination and independence for black women, for individuals, for collectives, and for countries. This will resonate well into the future. It will transmit forever. Uh, I really do believe that. Uh, and once you've gone through the exhibition, the final work in the exhibition occurs in October, uh, and you're going to hear about that shortly from its curator, Rashida Bumbre. It's called uh, Loophole of Retreat Venice, and it is the culminating work in the exhibition, a convening of over 100 black women leaders, creatives, thinkers, scholars, artists, performers, um, extending, building, and celebrating the idea of community, of support, of care and compassion that uh, is a through line in looking at the work of black women uh, and the contribution over time and um, focusing and centering in this amazing work that I think will be culminating in October. Beyond that, at the close of the Biennale, uh, the works return to Boston, uh, where the ICA will present Simone Lee's first survey exhibition in March of 2023, along with a major and first monograph of the artist's work. And following its debut at the ICA, the exhibition will tour nationally to the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C., uh, and then travel nationally. I had my first internship at the Hirshhorn Museum, so I am personally very, very excited about that. The presentation here in Venice, followed by the national tour, will give millions, literally millions of people, the opportunity to see your art. Uh, through key educational partnerships, we also sought to deepen the engagement of young people with Simone Lee's work. As you heard, the ICA has partnered with Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia on a year-long seminar to immerse students there in the art and ideas of Simone Lee and introduce them to the complex history of the U.S. Pavilion and your exhibition here. We're also working with the Peggy Guggenheim Collection to offer a multi-day teacher training program for middle and high school educators here in the Veneto region. The program will introduce students and teachers to the exhibition and the Peggy Guggenheim Collection, making art an important part of their curriculum and an educational resource. It is a true honor today to share Simone Lee's artistic vision with audiences around the world and with all of you. The work insists that black women's histories, labor, authorship, collectivity, and subjectivity must be visible. The U.S. Pavilion. We are so honored to be a platform for this visibility, and thank you for that so much. Needless to say, this project is a result of an ocean of talent and commitment by many, many, many people. Over the course of many, many months, we submitted our proposal to the State Department uh, over two years ago. Um, and we are very grateful for major support, and it's an honor to thank everybody from the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs of the U.S. Department of State, the Ford Foundation, the Mellon Foundation, you to be 
Bloomberg Philanthropies, the Wagner Foundation, the Terra Foundation, VIA, the Frankenthaler Foundation, and over 50 beautiful and generous individuals. But my greatest thanks go to Simone Lee. My words, uh, I have many. I'm losing my voice from all of them, but I really don't have the words to express my thanks, my congratulations, and my admiration. Um, now I would like to introduce Ava Respini, the curator of the exhibition, and my esteemed, beloved co-commissioner, followed by a conversation with Simone Lee and remarks by Rashida Bumbre. An amazing group of women made this happen, and it's a pleasure to share this with you. Hi, I'm Ava Raspini, co-commissioner and curator of Simone Lee's presentation here at the U.S. Pavilion. Buongiorno, bienvenuti a tutti. Sono lieta di presentarvi la mostra di Simone Lee intitolata Sovranità. So I believe great art speaks for itself. All you have to do is look behind me at the transformed pavilion. It communicates so much. You don't really need me to tell you that. But this is a press conference, and um, I'm here to give you just a little bit of background, a few points for you all to think about, and then I'm going to engage in conversation with Simone. So for the US Pavilion, Simone has created all new work in bronze and ceramic. Figuration is featured in the pavilion for the first time in recent memories. And with these works, the exhibition explores themes around history, colonialism, gender, race, and as Simone has done in all of her work, she centers black feminist thought. Simone is a sculptor who has a long engagement with clay, which also forms the basis of her work in bronze, which are sculpted from clay before they get cast into bronze. And these materials, of course, are age-old materials. And Simone has used these classic materials to push their limits to create new possibilities. And I can promise you, you have never seen the US Pavilion look like this, both inside and outside. Simone's work draws from the traditions of the African continent and the African diaspora. And the artist employs a strategy that she calls the creolization of forms. By that, meaning that she is combining disparate cultural languages that are linked through histories of colonization. We see this at play, of course, with the facade behind us. And it, this combination, which is both a formal strategy and a conceptual one, Simone creates hybrids that propose new meanings. And these are works that are utterly singular and entirely her own. Simone's work begins in research, and I just want to point out the brochure, which you can all access in your press packet for those press um, people around, and these are also free for all visitors. And this expands on the research that Simone draws from. But I want to dwell on the idea that ideation, ideas emerge from the making as well. Her hand is present in all stages of the making, and this is part of what makes her sculptures so incredibly powerful. The attention to every detail, every surface, results in works that are personal and human, but also monumental and awe-inspiring. So the strong presence of Simone's hand brings to light the labor of black women, both physical and intellectual, labor that has often gone unseen and unacknowledged, and this is one of the main themes of the exhibition. And finally, I just want to point to the ways in which Simone is pointing to histories that have often not been written or recorded, and her work addresses this gap within the historical record through the creative act. She has long honored the power of black women to inhabit worlds of their own creation, often through necessity. And so as you walk through this exhibition, I want you to keep this idea in mind, the idea of creating your own world, one's own society, one's own community, the idea of self-determination, which is fundamental to this exhibition, and of course is what the title Sovereignty underscores. So now, you have all been waiting to hear from Simone. It's my great pleasure to introduce her to you. 
And uh, we will have a short Q&A before we invite uh, Rashida to the lectern. So Simone, welcome. How are you doing? Um. <laughs> Can I use this? So I have a few questions for you. You've been working on this exhibition, as we just heard, for uh, almost two years. And um, you know the exhibition title, Sovereignty, came to you really during the process of developing the work. We didn't start with the title. The title actually is somewhat recent. Um, and for me, it's not only emblematic of the ideas that you're exploring, but it's also an extremely resonant title for our time. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, um, I wanted to thank a few people. Um, you have to like um, understand that this has been really intense for me and I may not be the best at public speaking, but I'll try. Um, I wanted to um, mention BC Silva and Peggy Cooper Kayfritz, who were my mentors and um, one of the main reasons why I'm here today. I am. <laughs> Um, I chose the title Sovereignty because um, I was trying to figure out um, a way to point to um, ideas of self-determination and also to now the fourth, fifth generation of black feminist thought, which uh, is a very polyglot, complicated thing, but one thing we all agree on, and you know, the real purpose of black feminist thought is um, our desire to be ourselves and uh, to have control over our own bodies. Um, so that's the main reason why I chose sovereignty. I also felt that some of the other ideas in the exhibition, like the souvenir, um, or just the ideas of scale um, were not something that I could like reduce to one word, so. Yeah. You know, we, we heard the beautiful letter uh, of recognition from the White House and, um, you know, to represent one's country is a heavy mantle to take on. And I wanted to ask you, what does it mean to you to represent the United States in 2022, in this moment? Well, on the one hand, um, one idea intellectually that's really important to me is um, that we need to get rid of the idea of nationalism if we're going to go forward. And so um, my main thought in approaching the exhibition was to ignore the idea of nationalism entirely. Um, however, I do think um, as a woman who is the child of immigrants and raised in Chicago, um, and someone who's been able to like bring her work forth into the world, I do have an American experience. And um, I'm very happy to be able to like share my ideas globally. So one of the things, the terms that I brought up, which is the creolization of form, this idea of a combination of, of histories that are joined by their colonial histories. I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about that, because so many of the works in the exhibition employ the strategy, a strategy that you've used in your work for, for many, many years. So one of the things that's difficult um, for black women and for black people in general across the diaspora is that uh, what has been written about us um, is very complicated and often wrong, or skewed, or distorted. And so when we're trying to like gather information, um, it's often from a less than uh, we often are getting information from someone who had a different intention than we have. Um, and so, for example, with the photograph that I respond to in this show, um, it's, I want to find a way to honor the woman in that photograph, um, but I also have to find a way to not drag all those ideas <clears throat> forward. 
Um, uh, I started to use the word creolization because of the work of Glissant, who really tried to describe what it means, the, the way cultures have blended together in the Caribbean, especially. Um, but I think now I would start to uh, describe my work as critical fabulation, um, which is a term that Sidia Hartman has put forward as that process of trying to take uh, ideas from different places and even collapse time so that things can be more true and more intentional. So when you started, you started by naming your mentors and, and even now you're pointing to the many interlocutors and influences, the women who have nourished you and your work. And this ethos of citation is so present in all of your work, um, but I would say particularly in the artwork Loophole of Retreat, a convening that will happen in October here in Venice. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit about what is your intention with Loophole? And before we hear from Rashida, we'd love to hear from you what you hope for this convening. Well, the first convening was actually at the Guggenheim Museum, um, and my show was titled Loophole of Retreat, which I think Rashida is going to discuss where that name generates from. Um, and the point, you know, one of the other things I've tried to do with my work and the way I talk about my work is to remind people of other audiences and that I have those other audiences, uh, specifically black women in mind. And um, I've been able to like make my work get better and move forward because I have the support of a lot of um, black feminist thinkers. And I realize at a certain point, people are really familiar with Foucault and Arendt but they don't know Sidia Hartman or Hortense Spillers. Um, and so it was a problem of visibility. And also I felt that I'm a little bit, I like to go to conferences. <laughs> and um, I felt that they were kind of rigid in form. Um, I have a lot of friends who are academics and it's very limited the way they can express themselves in a conference. So we also wanted to have a uh, free for all. Um, even for you know critics and scholars. So that was the intention. Wonderful. Well, Simone, thank you so much for the gift of your work, for sharing it with all of us and with the world. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you. And now it's my honor to introduce Rashida Bumbre, who will tell us about Loophole of Retreat. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm so honored to be here on this momentous um, week um, and really to talk about what we will do in October with the loophole of retreat, which you've heard a bit about um, from everyone who has spoken. Um, the loophole of retreat Venice will happen October 6th, I'm sorry, October 7th, 8th, and 9th um, at the Fundio. I have to get my Italian together. I'll just call it the Cini Foundation um, here in Venice. Um, and over those three days, we will be bringing together black women intellectuals, um, as Simone discussed, but black women intellectuals working in all um, disciplines. So we will have filmmakers, choreographers, um, writers and poets, scholars, um, and um, performance artists. Um, I have worked with Simone as a curator and collaborator um, over many projects. Um, so I organized her solo exhibition, You Don't Know Where Her Mouth Has Been, um, in 2012 at The Kitchen um, in New York City. And her project, The Free People's Medical Clinic, um, as part of Funk God Jazz and Medicine, um, which was a project of Creative Time in Weeksville in 2014. And in bringing together black women intellectuals here in October, um, I am actually organizing this together with curatorial advisors, Sadia Hartman, um, who is university professor at Columbia University and who you heard Simone speak about um, in terms of critical fabulation, and also Tina Camp, who is the Owen F. Walker Professor of Humanities 
and modern culture and media at Brown University. The three-day symposium will be comprised of dialogue, performances, film screenings, and presentations focused on black women's intellectual labor um, and creative labor. And our gathering will feature a global roster of participants, including the artist Lorraine O'Grady, who's featured in the film and the exhibition, Madeline Hunk Ehrlich, who, it, who created the film together with Simone Lee, um, scholars Sharifa Rhodes Pitts, who's featured um, as the portrait sculpture in the exhibition, um, Amy Meredith Cox, who's also um, used as a cast in Simone's sculptures as well, um, and many women from around the world. So the poet Raquel Lima from Portugal, um, Stella Nianzi Uganda from Uganda, who is a medical anthropologist, um, Gessica Guinness, who is a Haitian filmmaker, um, Bushra Khalili, who is a filmmaker and artist from Morocco and Germany, um, Deborah Anzinger, who's a contemporary artist from Jamaica, um, choreographers like Nella Seaway Zaba from South Africa, Paloma McGregor from St. Croix and New York, Ketley Noel, who's a choreographer from Mali and Haiti, uh, Moore Mother, who is a musician from Philadelphia. So that's just a breath of the women that will be here. Um, but as we said, we hope that this will be a gathering of all of you and all of us around the world, because as Simone said, um, the idea of nationalism is something that she um, questions with this work and something that uh, when we think about our own identity, we know that it itself is formed by being um, from the global south and from uh, the globe itself. And so I hope that you all will join us. Um, I wanted to just say a word about some of the directives um, that we have shared with the participants to inspire what they will bring forward. One um, is marunage. Um, and the term maroons refers to people who escaped slavery to create independent communities on the outskirts of enslaved communities. Uh, this directive particularly is informed by the artist Deborah Anziger's explorations of fugitivity and resistance in Jamaica's cockpit country, which is a site of historical refuge and resistance for Maroons and the home, home of Queen Nanny, Grandy Nanny, the 18th century leader of the Jamaican Maroons. Manual is also um, a directive for loophole. Um, and it's inspired by the Manual for General Housework, which is an essay in Sadia Hartman's Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, Intimate Histories of Social Upheaval. And so when we say manual, we mean meaning of or pertaining to the hand or hands, done or performed with the hands, now especially of physical labor and occupation. Magical realism is also one of the directives for loophole. And as defined by Caribbean poet Kamal Brathwaite, um, rather than only a, a literary genre, um, he talks about a larger cacophonous movement with multiple representations, the plural instant and the collective improvisation, a radical disruption of Western progressivist history. Magically real forms are the music, literature, movement, and approaches developed by people of African descent in the New World as a result of the catastrophes of the Middle Passage and colonialism, forms that are developed as an alternative to insanity. Medicine is one of the themes or directives. Um, and when we speak of medicine, we think of using the qualities of science, plants, and animals to cope with the natural and supernatural world around us broad and traditional approaches to diverse ailments, physical, spiritual, natural, and supernatural. The work of root and leaf doctors, traditional healers, and conjurers of the rural Black American South and the Global South. And then finally, Sovereignty, the exhibition's title, which speaks to notions of self-determination, self-governance, and independence for both the intellectual and the collaborative. Loophole in Venice builds on the eponymous one day convening at the Guggenheim, which Simone spoke about. Um, and Simone is very committed to the lineage of black women 
artists and intellectuals that make her practice possible. And in such, with this gathering, she continues a, her work of making black women's intellectualism and intellectual labor more visible. Um, the loophole of retreat will elevate this global conversation on black feminist thought in order to, intergener to have and nurture intergenerational um, and interdisciplinary connections between black women artists and makers and thinkers. The conceptual frame for the loophole of retreat, which Simone started to allude to, comes from the 1861 autobiography of Harriet Jacobs titled, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. In Jacobs' iconic narrative, she speaks about her life as a formerly enslaved woman who lived in a crawl space which she described as a loophole of retreat. Jacobs herself claimed this site simultaneously as an enclosure and a space for enacting practices of freedom, practices of thinking, planning, writing, and imagining new forms of freedom. And it is a place that loophole of retreat Venice will mobilize again in centering this space for the intellectual labor of black women and femmes. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. And now I invite you to come see the works in the exhibition. Enjoy your day. Gracias.